All right, everybody, welcome to your next talk. I'm Alberto DeChico. Today we're going to talk about how to produce a photo shoot that generates weeks of social content. So again, welcome to your next talk. Welcome to Pizza Summit 2020. I'm very excited to be a part of this. So let's get into it. Social media, posting on social media can be very daunting if you don't have a plan. So uh, this, this talk will definitely help you um, get on the right step towards that plan, build you a library, help you out so that every day you're not just thinking about, oh my gosh, what am I gonna post tomorrow? Uh, I gotta create content, I gotta go in and I gotta take a picture. No, we're gonna sort of alleviate all that and we're gonna talk about how to create that library how to, how to alleviate some of that stress. So here we go, let's let's jump right in it. Uh, my name is Alberto DeChico, again, of Forza Pizza. Um, Forza Pizza is a company I started in 2007, believe it or not. It's taken many shapes and forms since then, but essentially Forza Pizza has always been a place where anyone can go to share pizza pictures, share pizza videos, recipes, and just communicate through pizza. Um, at, in its current form, uh, Forza Pizza is a place where you can buy swag, is a place where you can, you know, some stuff like this, is a place where you can view recipes, read the blog, purchase some equipment for your pizzeria, specifically Pizza Master ovens, and also, uh, which is why I'm talking to you guys about this topic here today, Forza Pizza also pro provides digital media services for pizzerias and, you know, pizza people, pizza companies. So what I mean by that is uh, website development, um, social media publishing, social media ad campaigns, that type of thing. Um, so a little digital media aspect to it. Um, so I've been part of many uh, photo shoots and that's why I'm talking to you about it here today. I think they're key. I think there's something that once you get a hang of, you, you can start moving and you can start scheduling them regularly. And uh, they're, they're, they're real important. Again, alleviate some of that stress. Uh, the constant scramble for content uh, can be daunting. So having this having a photo shoot and knowing how to do a photo shoot uh, is really gonna really gonna go a long way and really uh, open up open up some uh, open you up to creating more content getting more creative with your content so um, just here's a, here's a quick overview of what we're gonna sort of get into here uh, the photo shoot goals um, you know what is the point of the photo shoot how many pictures do we want to get what are we shooting is it a whole menu or are we just talking about the special uh, what are we doing here? We need to define our goals of this photo shoot. We're going to talk about how to prep for the photo shoot. Very important. You know, there's some saying out there about preparation that uh, the ounce of it does something, but uh, you know, preparation really is key. Uh, knowing what you want to shoot ahead of time, knowing how the food's going to come out ahead of time is key. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how to produce the shoot. So meaning the production of it, like the actual shoot itself, um, what to do during it, what you need during it. Um, and how to run it. Uh, the other question that comes up a lot, just uh, I think this might be a reason why people aren't so uh, eager to jump into photo shoots is because they think photographer right away. And while that's very helpful, uh, we'll, we'll talk about whether or not you need one and then we'll get into if you want one or if you don't want one, what you can do or what you shouldn't do. Um, and then after that, you know, once you have all your pictures, how do you get it to social? So we're gonna go from shoot to social. You have all these pictures, what do you do with them? What's the best way? Uh, to utilize them, how do we organize them, and you know, pretty much how do we filter them out. We're not going to get too into uh, Instagram and Facebook uh, tactics and publishing. I think there are several talks uh, to jump into in that, and you can hit me up if you want to talk about that uh, at, at any time. But uh, for this for this talk, we're really going to focus on how to get all that content, how to create, and how to produce a photo shoot that'll give you weeks worth of content. So. Uh, again, we can talk about the Instagram and Facebook publishing uh, another time, but let's talk about uh, how to do a, a proper photo shoot to set you up. So like I said, the first thing we need to understand is what's our goal? Uh, what's a goal for a photo shoot? And really, uh, the goals I have on the screen here in the description here, uh, they're attainable. That's I don't know if you think these are big or small numbers, but this is definitely a manageable goal. And you know, since we want to do this in a manageable amount of time, a reasonable amount of time, we don't want to shut down the restaurant, we don't want to uh, waste uh, labor, we don't want to waste people's time. Uh, the goal here is to generate 40 to 50 social media photos in two hours or less. So we want to have a two hour photo shoot that at the end of the day, at the end of two hours, we're going to have 40 to 50 photos that we can use for social media. And 40 to 50, it's definitely doable. 
um, you'll see how it sort of gets doable like exponentially, uh, if you want to call it that. But that number also comes from, you know, if you're, if you're doing about four to five social media posts uh, a week, 40 to 50 social media posts will definitely get you, you know, two plus months worth of content um, easily, easily. So, um, you know, if you take this down, if you just tell, if you just try and set a goal around 30 photos, you'd be, you'd be good for a while too. So um, this is definitely an attainable goal. I think you can do it whether you, have, you use a photographer or yourself. So keep this one in mind. But that's the goal we're going to go for. That's what we're going to focus on during this talk. We're trying to get 40 to 50 photos in two hours or less. So here we go. To attain these goals, what do we need? Nothing crazy. No crazy really equipment. Um, really just need some tables. So I have two to three tables here just because um, you're going to want one table fully set like I have written there. And that's where you're going to be taking your pictures. So you can see it's got, you know, this picture here. This was a photographer picture. Uh, you can see the table set. It has the, the oil, the salt, pepper. You want to set the table nicely where you're going to where you're going to take those pictures. And then the other two or three tables, probably not three, but the other two tables off to the side is you're going to need those for pulling and uh, moving things around and staging uh, the next wave of pictures. And if food is ready, you're going to want to put it somewhere. So you're going to want it nearby, but you're going to be putting things down and picking things up off these tables. Um, pretty frequently as you go through the shoot. So um, again, you need two to three tables, one of them fully set, and then also the natural light source. This, I'm sure you've heard many times, anyone who tells you how to take a good picture, uh, they say natural light, natural light. It's true, um, it definitely helps. You definitely uh, should try and get it, definitely do your pictures during the day if you can. Um, and natural light is also important just no matter the, the theme or the aesthetic you're trying to go to, you know, I've done some, some, some photo shoots, which I think there's some examples in here. I've done some photo shoots where the, the pizzeria is actually dark place. It's a dine in, it's a more of a vibe uh, for a nighttime pizzeria. So we weren't trying to show a bright dining room in the social media pictures, but even though, you know, we wanted that dark feel, we still shot the pictures during the day. We used the natural light to get us, um, a nice photograph so that we can then tweak after that. So we use the, the natural light to eliminate shadows, to make sure everything pops. And then we took it down after the fact, uh, sort of dim the lights, if you will, through editing, through filters, through, through stuff like that. So I, if you can get the natural light, get it, do it during the day if you can, uh, open the door if you need to. If not, um, you know, you're just trying to minimize shadows at that point. If you have lights, if you have to do it at night, uh, one light above kind of things. So there's a shadow on everything. So we're trying to eliminate that. And then obviously uh, it's a photo shoot. So you need a camera. So you, if you could, if you have a DSLR camera, that's great. Uh, use it. If you have a phone, you can definitely do a, a shoot on your phone too. Uh, especially if you have the natural light, uh, it's definitely doable. So um, two to three tables, one of them fully set natural light source, like a window. Uh, where you set up that, full, that that set table, and then you need your camera. So then how to prep. Uh, this is how to prep for the actual photo shoot. So um, what do you need to do ahead of time? How do you need to plan? This is what we're going to go through here. So the first thing you got to do is tidy up. And I'm assuming everybody's clean. You know, I'm not going to say you need to wipe down your tables. That's sort of a given. But the, the tidy up and sort of the organization for a photo shoot is a little different. You're going to want to make sure... Uh, you know, where you're set up to, to photograph photos, photograph pictures in your food. Uh, you don't have like signs, let's say, where in the back of every picture it says uh, kids eat free on Tuesdays. So you don't want that. So take that down for the few hours. You know, even if it's just you know, a couple of the letters show up in the pictures, just take it down for a few hours if you can. Um, get some other cluttery type things out of the way. If you're, if you're going to do some action shots in the kitchen, uh, which I highly recommend, I'm sure your work surfaces are clean and all that, but maybe, you know, if you have these topping bins, you don't need all of them out. You can clean up some clutter. If you have, if you like to keep three or four towels by your station, even though they're folded and clean, you can just remove them for a couple hours and move them off to the side. So tidy up in that sense. If you don't, it doesn't need to be in the picture. If it doesn't add anything in the picture, get rid of it, tidy it up. The next item is to plan for specific shots. So I sort of touched on this already, but if you know, uh, let's say you're a new spot and you're trying to launch your website too, if you know you need these pictures for your website and you have uh, what you want your website to look like, you have a picture of that in your mind, 
maybe it's this picture that you're showing on the screen, you want a top shot of your pizza and you want it to be nice and flat and even, then make sure you write down that you need to get this picture. Let's say you're a, you're a pizzeria that likes to do the deep dish, you have a thick crust or something like that, or a cheese pull, um, make sure that you're planning to get that cheese pull if you're gonna wanna use it for something specific. So tidy up, make sure you're, you're planning for your specific shots that you need, write that down. And then of course, identify the menu items that you wanna shoot. So you might have a very large menu. You're not looking to get all the pictures of every item on your menu all at once. Uh, if you're a new spot, let's say, like if you just opened uh, one of the shoots that you'll see pictures of that I just recently did, there was a new new pizzeria just opened. So you said, yep, we got to shoot everything. Uh, we want to get all this. We want to get every menu item photographed. We want to be able to use it for the website, use it for everything, use it for signage. So let's go. We're going to do everything. If you've already done one of those or you don't feel it's necessary to do one of those, you've, you've been posting pictures for a while, um, then just take your menu. I always hold a menu in my hand when I'm doing these shoots anyways, and I'm circling the items uh, that I want to shoot. And I'm also setting the order of those items, which we're going to talk about is very important, but essentially identify the items you want to shoot and identify when you want them to come out because we don't want everything to come out at once. And you can't photograph everything at once and you don't want your food to get cold and look terrible. Uh, so you don't know one wants to see a, a cold pizza on social media. Um, so we want to try and eliminate that. So we're going to stage these out. So set the order of the items uh, after you've identified them. And then finally, uh, consider the next few months. So this, the idea is we're going to be for, we're producing enough content to use for a couple months. So um, right now it's April. Let's think about uh, May, June. So we might even be in June. We're still using these pictures, which is summer. Uh, right now it's April. It's going to be rainy and dark and we're still kind of maybe in some places even uh, eating and drinking some homey or warmy, cozy type foods anyway. So let's not include those warm and fuzzy uh, drinks and food in this shoe because we're not going to use them for very much longer. So that's kind of kind of a waste in that sense. So let's focus on what's going to happen when we're actually using these pictures. Maybe you're swapping in some lighter salads, some, some drinks that are more summery, get those in the shoe. And also something to consider too is uh, some holidays that might be coming up. If you know, for example, like Easter's coming up, if you have a dish that you always do, maybe you can work it into this photo shoot because you know um, while, while you're working with these photos that Easter's going to come up. And obviously, you know, you don't have to account for everything. Of course, you could take a picture uh, on Easter and use it. Um, it doesn't have to be in here, but if you're planning, uh, definitely consider when these photos are going to be used and, and try and plan for that. So tidy up plan your shots again if you need for a website or looking to showcase something let's say for your uh, online ordering website or online ordering menu uh, identify the items set the order and consider the next few months uh, while you're using these photos of what's going on to keep them relevant so now you prep now becomes the time where it's time to shoot the food so um, how do we do it let's produce this photo shoot let's get 40 to 50 pictures uh, it's, it's go time, you know, so uh, the first type of photos to consider are your action shots. So you walk in, it's time to do your photo shoot. Like I mentioned before, you don't want all this food sitting there waiting for you. The, it's going to go bad. It, your pizza is going to get cold. If you have lettuce and salads, they're going to get wilty. So you don't want to have all the food ready and waiting for you. That's tip number one. So when you start to shoot, you start to cook. So when you start to cook, that's when you want to get your action shots. You have no food on the tables, uh, nothing's out yet. So get in the kitchen, get them rolling pizzas, get them stretching them out, topping them, assembling dishes, you know, the hand shot, of course, uh, something in the oven, especially if it's wood fired, you got the fire going, uh, all those types of things. So get your action shots up front before any food's up. You're not going to want to go back into the kitchen. So once the food's coming out, you're going to want to be staying at the table. You know, you have those two or three tables, you're, you're moving things around, you're swapping, you're mixing, you're matching. You're not going to go into the kitchen back, take a picture, into the kitchen back. It's not a way to do it. So get your action shots out of the way. And then uh, groups of three. So as I mentioned before, we want to set the order and we want to set the menu items uh, that you want to come out. And I always use groups of three uh, for my photo shoots. I think it's a very manageable number. It's... Uh, you get a lot of mixing and matching, a lot of different combinations with threes, but also, uh, you know, meals sort of happen in threes. So you have appetizer, main, and dessert. You might have two mains and a salad, uh, 
you know, two appetizers and one large main, whatever it is. But groups of three is manageable. Groups of three seems to follow the the cadence of a meal, so that's why I also use it. And uh, as you have a couple different batches of three, the mixing and matching goes up uh, tremendously. So what do I mean by that? Uh, and why groups of three and how we're going to photograph these. So you have your group of three. The first thing you do, so you have the three dishes that are on the side table. You took, pull one off, bring it to your set table, take an individual shot. You're going to want an individual shot of all your dishes. Um, you have them, you might as well take an individual shot, maybe one from the top, one from an angle, um, and then move it off. Bring the second dish, take individual shots, do the same thing with the third. Now, once you have your individual shots, you can sort of set the table with those three dishes or two out of the three dishes. And that's where uh, the content sort of really starts to build here. So if you had a pizza, a salad, and a pasta, you can put a pizza in the salad and then take the pizza out, put the pasta in the salad, put the pizza in the pasta. You know, you, you sort of understand where I'm going with this, but um, you only have three dishes. And just with those three dishes alone, not counting even the individuals, you have five or six photos just in there. So again, two or three dishes, uh, mix and match shots. And then now, as you've already taken this first batch of three photos, the next batch, hopefully you've timed this out or you've told the kitchen during the shoot that you're ready for the next three. Those are gonna come out too. So you got, now you have six dishes, right? You have the three you just shot, the other three came out. You're gonna take those individual shots, uh, you know, take the individual, move it over, take the individual, take the individual. And now you're mixing and matching with six different plates. So you can come up with a, a photo like you see here. I think that that's seven dishes, but you can come up with something like that, a fully set table. You can do, you can do four dishes, five, you know, two from the first batch, one from the second. And now you're really, you know, creating different things here and, and your content increases. Don't, you know, what you don't want to do is have uh, four dishes on the table. Like for example, if you're looking at this picture here, I'm not just going to swap out, let's say the clams and put something else in there and pretend like it's a different picture. That's, that doesn't work and it's not going to fly on social media. So at least do some rearranging, move things around, swap out a couple, move them on the table. Um, and then, and then to really, you know, take this to the next level in terms of number of pictures you can get out of it. I don't mean next level, but like, um, it opens up a whole new sort of scene as you take the food and put it on those plates. You see those empty plates in front of those chairs. Uh, but there's a piece of pizza missing here. I don't actually know where it went, but <laughs> take the piece of pizza, put it on one of those plates, you know, put some pasta on the other plate, mix and match here and create a scene where, you know, people can envision themselves sitting there eating that uh, food that's in, on the plate in front of them. Open that bottle of wine, pour it in one of the glasses, uh, get, get a beer out there, you know, do something like that. So now you have, you know, all the mixing and matching you did with the with the, and then you had the individual shots and all the mix and matching you did with the arranged plates. And now you're starting to take food off and, and plate it. And you can even do an action shot holding, uh, you know, scooping the pasta and putting it on the plate. You know, you only had six dishes at this point that come out of the kitchen and you're, we're already in the twenties in terms of how many, uh, how many different pictures we have for social media. So again, think about it in groups of threes. Get your individual shots out of the way as soon as it comes out. Start mixing and matching and setting the table. And then the real fun part is at the end of all this, after you've had 15 dishes come out, you set the whole table with all the food and you get that beautiful uh, shot of pretty much a feast uh, displaying your whole menu on the table. So, you know, you can really have some fun with that, do some videos with that. Um, but now you've, you've made it. You've pretty much got your 40 to 50 uh, social media pictures based, you know, largely on, let's say 15 dishes and uh, you're ready to roll. I mean, uh, it really comes down to pacing it out, prepping, knowing the menu items you want to hit and the groups and grouping them in a fashion so that you want to photograph them together. Like I said, when you're picking three, I keep going back to the three, but when you're picking three items, if you have a special or if when people come to your place, they always seem to order pizza, wings and stuff. Yeah, that should definitely be one of your three. So, you know, think about things like that. Always try and, and group it in a way that you want customers to order or in a way that they're already ordering, in a way that you think is appealing. Uh, and, and, you know, that will shine through your social media. So 
groups of three, groups of three, groups of three, and mix and match on the fully set table. So knowing all that, maybe you're thinking like, this is crazy, you know, mix and match and, you know, three and then 20 and blah, 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 you're, you're going too fast. If, if, if you think that's going too fast and, you know, the swapping out of plates and you just think, you know, the photography thing is not really for me, I'd rather just pay someone, um, that, that's great. You know, do you need a photographer? No. Should you get one? I actually do recommend it. You know, I, I take a lot of uh, pizza pictures for myself, for Forza Pizza, I take my own pizza pictures. But when I'm working for customers, when I need to get some website photos, when I need to build a library of content to get the get a, a nice, concise message out, I do go for the for the professional photographer, for a food photographer uh, specifically, if you have one. So while you don't need it, while you can use your phone too, uh, I do think uh, hiring a photographer is a nice way to go. It also saves you time. Anything that saves you time costs you money but um it saves you time because they're sort of doing all the the editing they're going to deliver a single package to you where you're not doing any editing after you're not even going to have to hopefully not have to do any filtering when you're in, in social media like when you're in instagram you don't even have to make it brighter or darker um, these pictures are there ready for you to go because you paid a photographer so while you don't need one, and if you think this is something you can handle and you're going to do it very often, every couple months, then yeah, maybe you shouldn't spend the money. Um, but if you do, if you know one, use one. If you can get a hold of one, use one. Uh, again, you get the professionalism, you get the consistent uh, edits, the consistent aesthetic. You know, typically, a photographer will take all their pictures and then apply. It's not really like I'm not trying to sound like it's one button, but they'll apply the same theme throughout your throughout the entire library of photos they, that they just took. So it matches your restaurant, it matches what you're trying to do, and then they're all delivered to you edited. So those are the benefits of a photographer. I find benefits in them. I also can do my own, but uh, I do find a lot of value in, in spending the money on a photographer. And if you do decide to work with a photographer, here you can see the action shots like I mentioned before. But if you do decide to work with a photographer, this is a tried and true I'll even send you the, the email that I use when I, when I try to get a photographer to work with me. Um, these are tried and true bullet points that every photographer is looking for. Uh, I've, you know, I've used it. I've had photographers tell me that's exactly what I need. So number one bullet is be clear and be present, uh, meaning you're going to be present with the photographer when they're here. But when you're hiring a photographer and you're reaching out to them, it's typically in email. These last five bullets scope and subject usage timeline budget and reference pictures that's really all you need so scope and subject you're sending this photographer an email and you're saying okay i need a photographer because um i'm running a special and i want to highlight this item it's a pasta dish that's my subject and i just need um you know 15 to 20 photos of this uh pasta dish okay fine or maybe you're a new place you want 40 to 50 photos like we said you're a new place. I want to go through my entire menu. I want interior shots. Make sure you know that. Like I want my, you know, of the whole restaurant. No, nobody sitting in it. Maybe of the oven, that type of thing. You tell your photographer that. And usage, you would be like, I want these for social media. I need 40, 50 photos for Instagram. That's very helpful for them. They know what they're, they'll be used for. They can size them appropriately. So you're not cropping anything off uh, when the time comes to post. Um, so they, they can take pictures and edit the pictures knowing that you're going to use them for Instagram timeline. Of course, uh, I need them within two weeks. You know, I need, that's a very reasonable time. Uh, anything longer than that, you'll have to probably follow up with your photographer and they'll forget about it. So, uh, two weeks, I would say at the most, I try for one week. I've gotten mine in one week. I don't think it's crazy to ask for one week. Um, you know, they don't, the photographer doesn't really want your project lingering either if they're a professional photographer. So try and get one week if you can. Uh, and then budget. Uh, I, I recommend saying your budget in the email. So hiring a photographer, you want to tell them the scope, the usage, the time, and the budget. For example, um, I want to, I want to, I'm a new restaurant. I want to film the, the uh, I want to photograph the entire menu and I want to take some interior and some action shots. I want to use them for Instagram. I want them in a week and I have $400 to give you. You don't want to like that, but my, and you say, and my budget is $400. Is this acceptable for you? Here are some references pictures that I've seen on the internet that I kind of want to uh, photograph my food similarly. 
that's everything they would need to know. They can see what you're willing to spend, exactly what you want, and they can respond to you. $400 is a real number. Um, you know, this is a good frame of reference. I want to share that with you. No problem sharing that. Uh, this is for the shoot you see in the screen here. This is uh, one we did just two weeks ago, no, I guess a month ago. Uh, downtown Chicago, brand new restaurant. I paid $400 and we got, like I mentioned, 40 to 50 solid photos that we're going to be using in, on social media. So that, again, downtown Chicago, I consider her uh, one of the, if not the best food photographer in Chicago. And the rate for her was $400 for a few hours. Uh, we didn't quite hit two hours, probably an hour and a half. And then I had the photos delivered to me by the end of the week. We did it on a Tuesday, I think. So now you know, frame of reference, Chicago photographer, $400 for a food shoot. So go up and down from there, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's how you hire a photographer. That's everything you need to know. They're probably gonna be 15 minutes late because every photographer is 15 minutes late and they blame traffic. But anyways, that's a, that's a story for another day. So now you've hired them. Now you wanna know, what do I do if a photographer comes you know, what do I do? Do I stand there? Do they need my help? Should I work with them? Yes, you should. So now like how and what do you do for working with a photographer? First of all, you want to explain the flow. So you've identified the menu items. You know, we talked about the, the flow of threes. Explain that to your photographer. You know, tell them um, these are the menu items. Here's the menu. Look, I circled them. They're going to come out in this order. I want to do it in threes. Um, and there's the table. You know, or, you know, the photographer should set up the table, but you know, this is what I plan on doing. I want to group uh, certain dishes together and explain that to them. If you have any unique dishes or specials that, um, you know, let's say customers always order or they always eat the same way. Like I mentioned before, like a cheese bowl, Hey, when this dish comes out, if you could just, you know, we're going to lift it up, take the cheese bowl, do it that way. Uh, you know, when, when this appetizer comes out, we're going to open it up and show the inside that type of thing, just explain any unique dishes or specials and then help out. Like I mentioned before, you're gonna be swapping dishes in and out. Uh, photographer has equipment. Uh, sometimes they bring extra equipment like a, like a screen or a deflector. So if they're moving you know, from individual shot to twos and threes, grab the plate, move it over, move things off of them. They're, you know, just be helpful, I guess. If you think they, they you know, ask them if you need more plates, would you like, a, would you like this wine glass full? Do you think we should put a beer on there? Don't be too nosy. Don't tell them how to do their job, but just be just be helpful. Again, you want to get through this. Uh, you don't want her, him or her there all day. You don't want to be spending your whole day on the photo shoot. You want to get through it. You want to do it efficiently. Uh, and then finally, when you're all done, send them home with food. So that, that happens all the time. I mean, you're you're going to photograph so many so many dishes. The photographer's there. Just take care of them. Send them off with some food. Uh, end on a nice note, and uh, I'm sure you'll 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 get a relationship out of it and you'll, you'll see them next time. So that's how you work with a photographer. That's how you hire a photographer. That's what you do when the photographer's there. Let them do their thing, but make sure you're helping out uh, and explaining your expectations and exactly what you want, um, especially the quantity of photos that you expect to get from them. Uh, you can end up in this photo shoot and you busted out 15 of your best dishes and they, they give you 15 photos because they thought maybe you just wanted uh, one picture of each dish. So be clear, be, be accurate and help out. All right. So we've gone through the needs, what you need for a photo shoot, the prep, how you got to prep. We've gone through the rule of threes and the mixing and the matching. And we've also gone through, uh, how to hire, how to work with the photographer, what to look for, uh, what to, or what to pay a photographer, that type of thing. And now we've finished the shoot. And we have all these photos. We have 50 photos that are just begging to be posted on social media. They're going to be great. They're staged. Uh, they're edited. If it's from a photographer, they're already edited and they've been uh, delivered to you already done. Um, so now what do we do? So first of all, what I like to do is if I'm doing the shoot myself, let's say it's on my phone. I didn't hire a photographer. Uh, I'm the type of person that takes the picture, the same picture to three times. Maybe I move an inch here and move there, but I'll take the picture three times. Um, the first thing I do is delete two of those if you did three pictures. So you want to clean up the library. You want to be able to, to access your photos quickly and efficiently. So when it comes time to post, again, you're not just as daunted as you were without the photo shoot. You know, you want to be able to identify the pics quickly and post them. So what I do is I delete the redundancies. Uh, if you use a photographer, this usually isn't an issue, but if you're, 
if you photographed yourself, if you're photographing all these items yourself on your phone, chances are you took 100 pictures to get 40. So we want to delete the ones that you know you're not going to use, delete the redundancies, and keep a nice, concise library of your items um, on your phone. And then with that, since it's on your phone, what I like to do is make phone folders, They're actually called albums on an iPhone. So I'll create a new album in my phone. It says, you know, whatever photo shoot or whatever restaurant and uh, put all the pictures in there. I'll, again, remove all the redundancies, put all the pictures in an album. When it comes time that day to post, you go right to the album. You can either pick the next one. If, you know, if that photo shoot wasn't very specific and it doesn't really matter, pick the next one and, and go with it. Uh, again, what I like to do is if I'm keeping things in folders, I take the photo I'm about to post. Let's say I find one I'm about to post tomorrow or I find one I'm like, oh, this is a good one for later today. I just tap it into my favorites. I keep my favorites clear. Um, so on an iPhone, if you are looking at your pick, you hit the heart, it goes into your favorites. So I keep my favorites pretty small. This way, when I come time to, to post my picture of food, I'm not going through friends, family pictures and other pizza pictures. Uh, I just go into my favorites, get the one identified and I post it. But then once I'm done, once I posted that one, I remove it. I move it from my favorites. Sometimes I even delete it, especially if I have uh, my pictures on my computer somewhere. I delete it so I don't use it again. So I'm not, um, so I know if I'm running low, I know how many I have, I know what I've used. Um, obviously, if you have a picture that can be used uh, going forward, then I wouldn't delete it. If it's like a special that you run every week and a few months from now, it's not a big deal that you reuse that picture, don't delete it. But uh, I like to at least remove it from the favorites when I'm done using it or I delete it. Similarly, um, if you're using a photographer, chances are they're going to Dropbox everything to you. You're going to get 50 pictures in the Dropbox. You're going to have your Dropbox app on your phone. And you open up Dropbox, you pick the next one you want to post that day. You export it to your, to your library and you post it. Uh, after the post, I, again, you don't have to do this, but after the post, I delete it. It's still in Dropbox, but I delete it from my camera roll. And this way I keep everything clear, I keep everything clean, and I know what I posted and what I haven't posted, and it's not cluttering up all these photos. Um, so that's how I like to do it. Again, that's one way with the photographer, one way if you had all the pictures on your phone. Definitely delete the redundancies up front. Uh, that'll be helpful. And then finally, um, if if you're not if you're editing your pictures, um, so you did your photo shoot on your phone, I would not recommend editing them all. You know, at once, I would say uh, hold off on that till you're actually ready to post and get in, inside Instagram and use some of those tools. Uh, use the Instagram filters and the editing tools to uh, make it look like you want to look. Maybe write down some notes to keep it consistent. Like uh, I always use this filter and this much of it. Or I always use, you know, the brightness, the sharpness and the contrast at these levels. And just, you know, not to get too specific, but keep it consistent with the next post and you should be good to go. Edit an Instagram, and then uh, for me, the way I have my settings set up, once I post to Instagram, if it's an edit, if I edit it inside Instagram, it saves it back in my album, and now I have an edited picture saved uh, exactly how I want it to look. So I go open up Facebook, and I post it to Facebook as well. Different caption, it's a different platform, I understand, but now I have that edited picture, it's the same as Instagram, and I can use it then on Facebook, so. Um, Edit an Instagram, post it, get that edited picture back, save it in your library, and go post it on, on Facebook, right? So that's that's how you sh how you get the the photos up. Uh, you had your photo shoot. This is the in my mind the the best way to do it, or the most efficient uh, way to do it from shoot to social, from, from uh, a library to uh, Instagram or Facebook. Um, again, if you have any questions, again, ho hopefully you can reach out. Um, but this is the way I like to do it. This is the way I've been doing it. Uh, hopefully it works for you. Uh, and thank you. So hey, there we are. We, what did we do? We went through, uh, we decided, we, we set a goal, 40 to 50 pictures, so we can use it over the course, course of a couple months. We went through how to prep, how to prep for your photo shoot, which is very important. The rule of threes and the mixing and matching. Before that, we just we understood exactly what we need: a few tables, camera, and natural light. After that, we just we discussed how to actually produce the photo shoot, what you need to do, where you need to be, 
um, how you're bringing things in and out and you know some tips on how to get the most out of let's say 10 to 15 dishes how to how to turn 10 to 15 dishes into 50 pictures by the mixing and matching again and then maybe uh, cutting of food, scooping of food, putting food on plates, that type of thing, uh, and then doing some swap outs here and there. So that'll get you there. And then we talked a lot about um, how to work with the photographer, if you need a photographer, how to hire one, um, and then how to go for it with a photographer. So again, if there's any questions, uh, please let me know. We got contact info right here. Again, my name is Alberto DeChico, fortspizza.com. Follow me, of course, at Forts Pizza, wherever you look. And uh, let me know how your photo shoot goes. I'm really anxious to see. Uh, I hope uh, if it was daunting for you in the past to, to shoot a photo shoot, I hope you can just jump in now. If not, let me know, and we'll talk through it. Um, but, yeah, go for it. Take a photo shoot. I'm telling you, it'll set you up. You won't have to think about um or, or hope that somebody comes in and they share your food on social media the next day so that you can repost it and that you know takes the stress off of you finding one, a picture that day so set yourself up with a library if someone does do that for you if someone posts their picture uh of their meal from your place that's great you know you can definitely use it uh, and then keep uh keep the photo shoot pictures in the bank you know use that picture um Keep, keep the ones you, you just shot, but uh, that one will be like a bonus when someone comes in uh, or when you can repost somebody or when something happens in your restaurant. Just treat those as a bonus knowing that you have 40 to 50 pictures lined up, ready to go. Um, and when you get low, you can just do the photo shoot all over again. So again, that's really it. I hope you do a photo shoot. If you got questions, let me know. I would be happy to talk you through it. Enjoy the rest of the Pizza Summit. Hope your next talk is just as good. And I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you.